Welcome to Astoria, y'all. It's the oldest town in Oregon and the oldest settlement west of the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, actually Lewis and Clark spent a winter here once and it uh, rained almost the entire time and in their diary they called it a miserable experience. But there's a museum for them here. Unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna be dealing with a lot of that, but we have heard great things from people about the city. So we're about to find out what Astoria is all about. Hey, you guys. That's right. This is the Goonies house. What do you think I'm in for? I don't know. You look like a troll for sure. <laughs> hey, you guys. Here's Johnny. <laughs> Like nail the audition. That was really good. Thank That's you. That's right. Y'all remember the pirate ship scene? Holy ship! <laughs> that was right here. What you doing down there? Looking for guns. <laughs> oh. What you thought? Like they were gonna have magazines in here for you to read? <laughs> like a a like real. ammo. You didn't actually think that. Big gun. Submarine actually came up to the shore and attacked right here at Fort Stevens. All right, first adventure of the day. 300 years old. Wow. Did you get the shot? I got it. All right, good job. <laughs> To the Oregon coast we go. Second trip in a row actually, and our first stop is Astoria. It's actually been raining here all morning, but we happened to find a little window where the sun peaked its head out, and now we're all packed up and ready to go. Yeah, unfortunately, we've got rain in the forecast for the duration of the time that we're gonna be in Astoria, but as we always do, we're gonna try and make the best of our situation, wherever we are. So today's drive is about three hours. We're going straight up five to Portland, hang a left and take it to the ocean. And Astoria is actually in the northwestern corner of the state. Like we mentioned last week when we were in Newport, this is one of the places that we tried to get during the summer months, but completely booked up. But we found the spot this time at the KOA in Astoria. We're gonna take advantage of our KOA membership. Every dollar counts, right? Might be rainy and gloomy, but it is pretty because it's that time of year where all the leaves are changing. All right, family, we have officially arrived at the KOA. Let's go get checked in. Keep coming back straight now. It's creepy to roll up and be like, oh, it looks like we're about to roll into the ocean. Like it's because there's also water right there. Is that what it is? Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure we found the makeout spot in Astoria. <laughs> is that right? I think so. Are you sure you're not going to get killed by the Zodiac out there? This is P&W after all. That's true. Serial killers galore. Whoa.
fortunate for us, our KOA is directly across from Fort Stevens State Park. We had a bit of a late check-in, but at least we made it out here for sunset, which is absolutely gorgeous. If you are a Project RV regular subscriber, you probably know that we're ocean people. If you don't, then guess what? We're ocean people. To be fair, we're also mountain, desert, That's and lots of other people, so. <laughs> so here's the deal with where we're standing. There's actually a fort around here somewhere that was established in the Civil War and actually ran all the way through World War II. Yeah, this park is actually really, really big. It is a little bit west of Astoria and it sits kind of on the corner of both the ocean and the opening of the mouth of the Columbia River. And also, it has a shipwreck. That's what we're here for. This shipwreck actually came ashore in 1906. Kind of creepy looking. It's super creepy looking. Do you think that those were part of it too? And like this is all that's left? Well, maybe. It's coming. <laughs> Did you get the shot? I got it. All right, good job. <laughs> it's chilly, but it's worth it. It's super pretty. Something that we didn't realize until we actually rolled out here is you can bring your car on this beach. So we may do that while we're here at some point. I don't think there's camping like there is in Port Aransas, but. We'll link that here for you. At least you can drive on it. That's kind of cool. We may be beach people, but we can't seem to hang on the Oregon coast, especially not this time of year. So we're gonna watch the rest of the sunset from the car. A little frigid. All right, y'all, kicking off the day at Astor Park to see this bad boy right here, the Astoria Column. And we figure we do like the settlers do and get to the high ground. And I think this is the highest place around here to get a lay of the land. Now this thing is 126 feet tall and it is covered in paintings that depict Oregon's history. Despite the rain and fog, still a really sick view of the town from up here. Yeah, it would even be a better view if you were to climb this thing. They have a viewing platform, but we will not be doing that yeah, today. Victorian Heights, they don't mesh. Obviously, I could just Google this, but what do y'all think? Do you think they painted it once they put it up right? Or do you think they painted it before they put it up right? Let me know below. <laughs> hey, you guys. That's right. This is the Goonies house. There was actually quite a few films that were made here in Astoria, uh, including... Kindergarten Cop, Free Willy. The Ring, two. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, three. Some major ones around here for sure, <laughs> so. If you've ever seen the 80s classic, The Goonies, this is definitely worth a visit. Just be aware that this is all private property now and someone actually lives here and they're nice enough to let you come up here and stand nearby but be respectful. Someone lives here and it's not the good. Nope. All right, we came, we saw, we conquered. Let's boogie.
got any Goonies fans, Astoria Brewery got all the merch for you. adventure of the day. Let's put some work in. We are here. We're going to be going straight to the left for the spruce. Which you trying to show off your new boots? Is that what's going on? Yeah, this is their test run. I previously just had the shoes that were lower profile. I wanted something with a little more support up top. Okay, well, we'll see how they do. So we may have mentioned something about the weather at this point in this episode. Well, here we are again today, but we did find a nice sunny window break in the rain. Uh, so we've decided to try and get some outdoor activities done. First stop is Cathedral Trail. Cathedral Tree Trail. That's the one. <laughs> so the Cathedral Tree Trail leads, well, obviously to the Cathedral Tree. Uh, I think it's gonna take us probably less than a mile in and out. If you so wish, you can also go all the way up to the Astoria Column from here. I think it makes it a little closer to maybe three or four miles. Yeah. The great thing about this trail is that it is super close to downtown Astoria. It is very convenient to get to. If you're in the area, definitely make a trip. I think this is the fork in the trail. If you go to the right, you're gonna go all the way to the Astoria column. We've already seen the column, so we're gonna go to the tree. I like how they have benches set up on either side so you can just sit here and look at it. <laughs> this big boy right here, this is the main event. This Sitka spruce is over 300 years old. 200 feet tall this thick boy is. Woo! A lot of cobwebs, huh? You going in? Get off me. <laughs> Seriously, wow. That's pretty wild. That's pretty cool. 300 years old. Wow. Pretty old. Eight and a half feet thick. Back at Fort Stevens State Park on a bit of a history mission because there's actually some pretty interesting history around here. This right here is Battery Russell. Did you know that the Japanese actually did attack mainland United States during World War II? Most people don't know that. In 1942, a submarine actually came up to the shore and attacked right here at Fort Stevens. That made it the first foreign attack on continental soil, I believe, since the War of 1812. That's wild. That's nuts. very studious. You always pick the creepy spots first. Oh! Wait, you thought like they were gonna have magazines in here for you to read? <laughs> Like, yeah, like ammo. No. You didn't actually think that. I 
Your parents are both <laughs> from the military. Okay. <laughs> they would be disappointed. Let me ask you something. Do you think you're gonna find okay. Or like seashells? <laughs> okay. It's pretty good. I am not a military person, but I think it's pretty cool that these things literally would come up over the wall fire and then come back down and the most advanced guns that they had here at this fort could shoot up to 15 miles All right, victoria with the first view of the ocean from the fort oh yeah, oh, yeah there it is Out this way, you can see where the Columbia River meets the Pacific Ocean. And the Columbia River is actually the biggest river in the west of the United States, I believe. And the amount of rushing water that goes into the ocean of the Pacific creates a lot of like weird changing sandbars and lots of weird like whirlpools and stuff like that. Yeah, they call it the graveyard of the Pacific. And that's evident by the fact that over 2,000 ships have sunk there since the late 1700s. Ooh, that's crazy. Also, bonus, I don't know if you can see, but there's a disc golf course at Fort Stevens State Park if anybody wants to take advantage of that. What you doing down there? Looking for guns. <laughs> We have now been to Oregon's most visited state park at Silver Falls State Park. I will link that here. And now, Oregon's largest state park. Like, acreage-wise. Lots to explore here at Fort Stevens State Park. In fact, they also have an RV park if you wanted to stay here. A little bit of history and some good views. Not bad for Bad Alice. Thing is crazy looking. It's pretty. That, my dear, is one big Douglas. Well, we saw the cathedral tree, and that is like nothing compared to this thing. This thing is 624, well, was 624 <laughs> years old until they chopped it down in 1937. This log alone weighs over 61,000 pounds. Like I know nothing about trees really, but this seems really big and they must have been really proud of it. Yeah, it's 231 <laughs> feet tall and contains, I don't know what board feet are, but I'm assuming like planks that they could get out of this like feet wise and it's 9,700. That's a lot of wood. So this, is the getaway vehicle from the Goonies movie. <laughs> That's really cool. Where are the bullet holes? I don't know, I thought it said bullet holes and all. Oh, there's one in the windshield. Some of us is stretch, but that's really funny. Every Oregon film can be connected to Corey Feldman. <laughs> Six degrees of separation. What do you think I'm in for? I don't know. You look like trouble for sure. <laughs> Welcome to the Oregon Film Museum. It's actually inside what was Astoria's working jail until 1976. Yeah. Hey, you guys. That's awesome. We found the booty. The booty. <laughs> Don't touch the booty. Uh -oh. One of the handful of Japanese lanterns used in TM and T. Uh, three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the three. Do you recognize any of the quotes? Uh, hey, you guys. Where is that? <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> Can you name 10 movie oh, quotes yeah. out of these 300? Well, we've got like two. Five from? Johnny Five. Right there, man. Short circuit. I don't know what that is. It's Johnny Five, Victoria. Come on. Never heard of this. Do better. Never heard of it. 
I don't actually, what year? 85, wow. So they actually have it set up in here where you can like shoot scenes, like film it, and then like email it to yourself, which I think is really freaking cool. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> You're really good at that. Natural. Haunted. Lights, can't, oh, it is haunted. What is going on? <laughs> that's weird. This is actually really cool. Here's Johnny! <laughs> <laughs> is that good? Did I nail it? Did I nail the audition? That was really good. Thank you. I thought Jack Nicholson was right there. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. Here's Johnny! <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Who did better? Let us know. <laughs> The Goonies takes place in the same universe as the Gremlins. They actually even reference the, mo the other movie. No way. <laughs> this I know. The rest of the place is self-guided. Uh, I don't think that's the right movie. Oh, dang it, that's the garage. <laughs> Whatever. <Nope. laughs> Not the ring. What do you think? Worth it? Yeah, I mean, $6. I thought it was pretty cool. We spent like an hour and a half in there. <laughs> I got killed. The zombies didn't stand a chance. No, they stood all the chance. They killed me. <laughs> it's not like it was when I was 10. I used to be a skilled Mortal Kombat player. You think your reflexes have slowed down? Yeah. <laughs> About to win me a stuffed animal. Oh no! It's like it's it's like it's rigged or something. One of the things that we wanted to do that we thought we weren't going to be able to do was go to Arc Arcade, which is a bar slash arcade, very popular here in Astoria. And on Google, it says it's closed, but that's because it's under new ownership. I think it's Cascade Arcade. Cascade Arcade. I'm. Super excited to use my tried and true method of just hitting random buttons. I usually win. Victoria's pretty much beat me every single thing that we've tried today. <laughs> Okay, we just left our KOA campground. We've got a couple of more stops before we wrap up this episode, but figure, why not knock out a Project RV campground review. Boop. So technically this was the Seaside Warrington Astoria KOA. A little confusing, but it's the only KOA in the area. So if you Google it, you'll find it. Price range, it was anywhere between 60 and $95, depending on what kind of amenities you were looking for. We went on the higher end, so it was kind of a pretty penny for us, even with our KOA rewards discount. However, it was a really cool campground. Yeah, it was really awesome. I could see how it could be super popular during the summer, especially with the kids. They got amazing like playground, they do tie-dye with them, they have a BMX uh, bike course yeah. or whatever. You can rent bikes from them, indoor pool and jacuzzi, all sorts of stuff, honestly. It was really nice. Yeah, and the campground is huge. Yeah, huge. And the store's amazing too. Yeah. Um, and I think another big draw besides the local towns is that it is right across the street from Fort Stevens State Park and literally a mile from the beach in there, so. Yeah, good location. Look at this, jeez. <laughs> I think it's huge. Oh my God, good Lord. I had no clue it was that big. It is so big, jeez. Wow, that's impressive. Go figure, nicest weather day we've had so far is the day that we're headed out of town. But of course, we had to stop here at Cannon Beach because this right here is one of the iconic images haystack rock that you see when just Google Oregon coast. Yeah, it's actually also been used in quite a few films, including The Goonies. That's right, y'all remember the pirate ship scene? Holy ship! 
That was right here. And with our quick little drive down here, this actually pretty much means we've driven the entire northern coastline of Oregon from Newport up. A lot of these beaches are pretty close together and uh, there's quite a few people that will actually make it a whole trip driving the coast of Oregon and stopping at all the little towns along the way. Yeah, so if you are in Astoria and you can only do a couple of the beach towns, these are gonna be the closest ones and highly recommend getting out here. Not only was this the end of the line for the Lewis and Clark expedition, this is also the end of the line for this episode. Yeah, it may not actually be the end of the trail where they landed, but it's supposed to be symbolic, I guess. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we will see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye y'all.